This presentation includes forward-looking statements as determined by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. All statements, other than statements of historical facts, included in this presentation that address activities, events, or developments that the company believes or anticipates will or may occur in the future are forward-looking statements. Such forward-looking statements involve known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors which may cause the actual results, performance, or achievements of the company to be materially different from any future results, performance, or achievements expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. Such factors include general economic and business conditions, the ability to acquire and develop specific projects, the ability to fund operations, healthcare service demands, changes in healthcare practices, government regulation, and other factors over which the company has little or no control. The company does not intend and is not obligated to update publicly any forward-looking statements. The contents of this presentation should be considered in conjunction with the warnings and cautionary statements contained in the company's recent filings with the SEC. Now I'd like to turn the conference call over to our chairman, Dr. Bill Donovan. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for being part of the Q3 uh, 2015 conference call. Before we get into all the slides and stuff, I just have a couple comments. As shown on this slide here, there's a lot of changes going on in medicine. Medicine is under attack. Reimbursement is down due to the Affordable Care Act. Hospitals have increased competition from physician-owned outpatient surgery centers, and hospitals are looking for quality assurance tools to gain market share, increase reimbursement, and defend against liability claims. And we'll talk today about the Halo RX that a particular hospital is looking to use this, especially in ob uh, dealing with liability claims. Transparency is a tool which will allow hospitals to cope with the issues that I just talked about. I'll also be talking about uh, telemedicine and some other changes. In this slide, we deal with spine injury solutions. We're dealing both with diagnostic funding and HALO technology. We're providing transparency and solutions both to doctors and hospitals. And this is why we've really changed the name to Spine Injury Solutions, Inc. Now, we had an AK today that's been released, and this deals with the annual meeting that we held on November the 10th, Tuesday of this week. Five board members were elected, and the auditors, Ham Langston, Berzina, LLP, were also approved. But that was just released on an AK. Next slide. Let's talk about opportunities for spine pain management. Later in this talk, we're going to have Jeffrey, Dr. Kronk, on the phone. And, and Jeff is an expert on ligament injuries. And Jeff has given me this graph where chronic pain, which means somebody has pain for more than three months. In the United States, this is a $635 billion market for just chronic pain. It's more than cardiovascular disease, cancer, and diabetes. There are approximately 126 million adults per year with chronic pain. I feel that technology is going to help us with 
transparency to be very involved with this chronic pain market. Next slide. When we're talking about chronic pain, this is one in 10 American adults. If we think that there's 100 people on this call, now you have an idea how many patients would have the chronic pain. And it's said, the researchers have shown there's different degrees of pain but there's more than 126 million adults experiencing chronic pain. This is a very, very significant market. Next slide. When dealing with our mission, we're talking about transparency, and technology. So together it helps us increase the number of diagnostic funding procedures that we would fund and simultaneous reduce risk management. The quad video halo is the centerpiece of the transparency. And David uh, Spencer will talk about how there's a modification on the QVH that will work with other types of surgical cases. Next slide. I have a snapshot uh, on Q3. While I'm not happy with the revenues on Q3, we're making progress. We've reduced the SGA. We've reduced the net loss. We feel that we have to continue monitoring our cost and increase the number of funding for the diagnostic test. Next slide. I'm going to turn over this part of the call to John Bergeron. Thank you, Dr. Donovan. Uh, what we have here is the Q3 2015 to the Q3 2014 uh, P&L. And you'll notice that uh, we have reduced our SGNA expenses, and we had a net loss of 219000 based on a net revenue of $512,763 which generated a gross profit of 291,206. Uh, two things I want to bring to your attention. One is, is that uh, we are basically, we have incorporated another company into spine pain or spine injury solutions but with the quad video halo. We have basically have a startup company with the quad video halo that's cutting into our earnings. So as an example, in the third quarter of 2015, $93,000 was attributed to the development of the quad video halo and couple that with a hundred thousand dollars of the expenses were non-cash so if you took the 219 and took out the hundred thousand non-cash and the ninety three thousand dollars that's QVH spine injury solutions when the funding part of it would have lost like twenty six thousand dollars so it looks bleak we are working on cutting that and as soon as we get the certification we can start getting additional revenue streams with the quad video halo. Next slide, please. This is basically a comparison of the Q3 2015 to December 31st balance sheet. Uh, the things that I would like to bring out to you is that we do have a 3 to 1 current ratio. Uh, one of the things you don't see on here is, is that we still have approximately $1.1 $1 million in cash that we can draw on coupled with the cash that we have in the balance of like $200,000 as of September 30th. We continue to be very frugal with our money. We try to be good stewards of it and hopefully we will start seeing a reversal of these losses in the future. 
And with that, I'm going to turn it back to Dr. Donovan. Next slide. On our procedure growth and cumulative case, we continue to be doing additional procedures and the cases from inception is over 4,400 cases and the procedure is almost 7,800. So we're seeing a continuation in the growth. Next slide. When we talk about the cases and the cash collected, from the beginning, we've collected now $12,664,000. And that's on a little over 2,071 cases. We still have 2,380 cases still open. From the beginning, we've had 127 cases where we had no collection of any money, where we had invested $313,000. So the risk of a no payment is still very low. Next slide. I would like to talk about some of the major developments in this quarter. Over on the left side, number one, we've talked about the certification that the HALO is going through. What I can say, I now fully understand the difficulty in dealing with the certification bureaucracy in a medical environment. The QVH is a medical product. It is not a medical device. However, it is being tested at the highest level that a medical device would be tested. It takes time, but David and Tommy Cooper are just moving it ahead, and we will get this completed. We opened a second um, affiliate, a new affiliate in Tyler, Texas, in order to cover the eastern part of uh, Texas. We have also been developing several new leasing options uh, for doctors and third-party buyers of the QVH. They're all waiting for all the product testing to be completed. When we talked about earlier the liability issues with hospitals and doctors, we took this, the, uh, the HALO and undocked it and put it in a different format, and we used it at a hospital uh, where there was robotic surgery going on so that we David was able to integrate several video feeds into our technology. Uh, the doctors were absolutely impressed, and we're now pursuing that in, in certain areas. But what I do know, at this particular hospital, uh, they do a lot of robotic surgery. And, they, and we've been told that the next year, the head of robotic surgery at this large hospital wants this type of medical transparency. And he's in ob and it deals with liability claims. But the key is transparency. And the last thing we did actually just this past week, we brought on a new, 
very well-known individual to our board of directors. Dr. Jeffrey Kronk is both a chiropractor and attorney. He was in practice for 15 years, and he understood that doctors, attorneys, need to be taught about transparency in any type of these accident injuries. And to give you an idea, and I'm going to put Jeff on in a second, he's on the advisory board to the National Pain Foundation. He established the first online doctor education program strictly geared to spinal ligament injury education. And you all remember that graph of $635 billion for chronic pain? According to Dr. Crunk and his data, injury is the primary event that initiates the disease of chronic pain. So we're really fortunate at, at Spine to have Dr. Kronk join our board of directors to help us identify the areas of opportunity. And it's my pleasure right now to have Dr. Kronk get on the call and just say a few words. Jeffrey? Let me unmute here. Okay, Dr. Donovan, thank you very much for the introduction. Just as a point of transparency, um, I have a law degree, but I'm not a practicing attorney. So I want to make it clear that I'm not a practicing attorney. I have a law degree. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on the board. Um, anyone that's on the call right now, I'm an independent board member, which means my total function is an, as, as an advocate for the shareholders. Uh, my job as an independent board member is to put your interest first, and that's a job I'll take very, very seriously. Um, I have a lot of opportunity in the market. I, I do a lot of things, as, as Dr. Donovan explained. When I look at opportunities, I, I don't take every opportunity that comes. I probably have an opportunity once every week or two of somebody that's bringing something new to say, hey, would you, you, know, would you like to look at this? Would you look at getting involved with this? I don't get involved with opportunities unless there's a value to the end user. In this case, the end user is the patient. Um, as Dr. Donovan indicated, there's an epidemic of chronic pain. It's, it's an unsustainable epidemic. Financially, to the United States or any country, um, the numbers are unsustainable. So the market is changing dramatically. Um, when I saw the quad video halo, uh, I knew that transparency is what is needed in the market. What I mean by that is, um, transparency means that nothing's hidden. Uh, if you want to make a decision or you want to solve a problem, you have to have all the factors on the table and nothing can be hidden. That's what transparency is. Medicine and healthcare today needs transparency. It needs for things not to be hidden so proper decisions can be made. It also needs to be objective, which means that you're viewing things without bias. So if something is very helpful, it doesn't matter what profession is using it, doing it, um, how these procedures are delivered, if, it, if, it's, if, it's, if it's viable and it's actually producing results, you have to look at it in an unprejudiced fashion. That's objectivity. And then, of course, results speak for themselves. Um, when I looked at the Halo video and when I looked at the company and what the company was trying to do, that it, this is right in line with what we do because at the end of the day, it's about bringing value to the patient. It's about if you're going to do a surgical procedure, you want that surgical procedure to be done in the best possible way so that the best opportunity for results are there. And that's why I like this company. That's why I like Dr. Donovan. You know, I liked what the purpose was. That's why I got involved with the company. Um, we met with the board yesterday. Uh, the people that are involved with this company are, are spectacular. They have that mission and that purpose in mind. And, and that's why I feel very fortunate, Dr. Donovan, that you offered the position and the board offered the position for me to be on the board and to contribute, at, in which I, I believe I will contribute and be able to contribute, 
in some significant ways because of our alignment in the market. And I'm very, very happy to be here, and thank you very much again for this opportunity. Uh, Jeff, thank you very much. And I think the shareholders will be hearing more uh, from Dr. Crunk because we've already are initiating some things to work together and so forth. Next slide. Earlier in the talk, uh, when I was talking about hospitals, liability issues, here's an actual picture taken uh, during a robotic surgery. And the doctors who do robotic surgery at this particular hospital, it's a large teaching hospital, especially the ones in ob Gyne, want this for lab, uh, to defend against liability claims. They know what they do, they know how they do it, and they're very experienced. So I think that we will be hearing more about this uh, in the near future. Next slide. As I mentioned before, uh, we've settled a little over 2,000 cases. In fact, 2,071, where we've collected uh, 12.7 million. We still have 2,339 cases uh, that are awaiting final settlement. To date, our average case settled for $6,132. And the number of cases with no collection was 127. I believe there's clear evidence of the cash collection potential of SPIN's core business model. And many of you remember that we had previous uh, affiliated doctors in Florida and South Texas. And the questions are, are there new markets that offer similar growth revenue opportunities? And the answer is yes. And number two, are we still able to collect money if we are no longer working in the market? And the answer is yes. Next slide. As we look to the future, we want to increase the number of diagnostic procedures that are funded and leverage the QVH technology. We're looking at the undocked or Halo RX as a different kind of market, but that can help us both with hospitals and doctors. And I think the key value, and Jeff hit on it, it's transparency and solutions. And the issue of ICD-9 versus ICD-10 is going to significant slow the reimbursement to doctors. And I believe there will be more doctors who are interested in working with us to increase numbers of patients. And I think we're going to see that over the next 12 to 16 months. Next slide. As we talk about our goals, uh, because of the HALO RX, we've been approached to provide transparency in different types of surgeries. Mass tort is one area. We feel that telemedicine has a place, and David will touch on that when we talk about the QVH. The other thing that we have been using is the remote uh, connections with the QVH 
and I want David to say a few uh, words about how out of Houston we can remotely monitor uh, the QVH technology in the cities that it's employed and deployed. Next slide. I'm going to turn this part of the meeting over to David and he's going to talk about the quad video halo and as we see right here the US patent number is 9084577 beta 2. Here's David. Uh, next slide please. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, David Spencer here, uh, president over Quad Video Halo. Uh, I want to uh, go on ahead and touch on real quick on some four uh, four areas that we've been focusing on. Uh, the quick overview, the system update in regards to what we've done to improve it, and also to meet our UL requirements that we are currently going through the stringent testing with. Also, Halo rebranded. We uh, went on ahead and elected to do that from a marketing standpoint, but also from a technology uh, and vertical market standpoint. And then also uh, by finding those vertical markets, uh, number four we'll touch on what that's uh, where we're seeing those being placed into the market. Uh, next slide please. So with the uh, the overview and more of the system update are kind of a blend here with the overview is uh, we added remote monitoring uh, what Bill had talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, that gives us the ability to have uh, less resources to manage from a tech support standpoint and always have our eyes and ears on systems that are out there remotely from a troubleshooting standpoint and also from a uh, loss prevention when we buy uh, AR notes we can go back and do uh, audits to make sure that things are uh, you know that are being built are actually taking place so it's a, it's a good uh, it's a good investment security blanket as well we take all of that uh, from a technical port, technical support standpoint. We then lead into the SharePoint integration that gives us the ability to provide the end user, i.e., the doctor or and the attorney in this case, and support staff, the ability to log into a portal website that uh, has all the the the, uh, the procedures stored, so we can always resource back to them, and also give uh, people part of the uh, the file, the ability to uh, get back in there and download and look at the videos at any time and request so they're not stuck in a situation where they're fumbling for a DVD or a memory stick or whatnot. They always have the availability online. Uh, the modifications that uh, have come to the Halo uh, within the last year that we've been working on uh, not only talk about reducing the footprint, but also keeping in mind the UL certification that we've been uh, seeking after. And then that also goes into usability. So we created the Halo app that we're continu that continues to evolve as we find these vertical markets um, that we do use uh, to go back and review cases uh, on a regular basis. Next slide, please. So uh, the next area that I'd like to highlight is the system update. It all pertains to uh, not only when we started looking at the ability to uh, reduce resources to maintain these systems and not have on-site techs having to babysit these uh, carts and the halo rings that are deployed out there in our affiliated clinics and also uh, when we do uh, start to sell after UL approval. We didn't want to have a bunch of techs across the United States to try to maintain these systems. But So while we evaluated number one, which was the original system, we brought in uh, Gen 2 uh, that brought in all these features that we have talked about but Generation 3 gave us the ability to meet UL requirements and new design, and that brought us to the uh, rebranding aspect uh, for marketing and all those things. And so when you look at the next slide, please. Uh, the, some of the additional features that you can see here uh, are also the barcode scanner to better leverage, uh, you know, usability, to, uh, disposal, things of that nature to bring into to where those are trackable. Uh, and, and these kind of things have to be put under strenuous testing from the UL, as Bill touched on. Um, it's been an, an enormous task, is a light way to put it, to uh, get this pushed through. 
Uh, what Bill had touched on is that it is being tested at a medical device level. And what that means is, is that at the end of the day, this is everybody's just got to keep in mind that this is in the patient's environment. Um, whether it, it's close to them, they can touch it, feel it, or whatnot. And there's a huge liability to that. Ad. So uh, that's why these tests take a long time. They have a lot of dependencies that go inside of it. And they do pick apart what we design. And uh, it, it takes a little bit to get this passed through. So it's, um, it's going to be great when we got the, uh, whenever we finish this up just because of where we can go. It doesn't limit us to a clinical environment, but it also takes us all the way to the top, which is where the hospitals are at. So um, looking at Halo 3000, those are just uh, some of the features that we've built into it. Next slide, please. Uh, as I've touched on before, the Halo app uh, application development is an evolving animal. It, it is always growing. We are finding different ways to take strides with it. Um, telemedicine is in a market that we are finding out that is uh, really coming to light and fruition with, uh, you know, with the way that the medical industry needs to collaborate and get uh, not only not only for the doctor to share, you know, his his medical opinion and his procedures. It puts more eyes and ears into the OR without actually being a person involved. So the the app is a uh, is a is a is a good component to not just the generation three Halo and what it can do at the clinical level, but it also opens the door for us to uh, bring in more vertical markets uh, with telemedicine, especially. Uh, so that's kind of a quick overview. It has live streaming, uh, procedure archiving, patient medical information, vital signs, and all of that. Uh, so that's the Halo uh, 3000 iPad. Next slide, please. As all of the technologies evolve, uh, so does the other aspects of the company. Uh, so we wanted all that to reflect with the consistent branding. Uh, if you've been out to the website lately, you'll see the new format that's come out. It's also going to include, uh, next week we'll launch the uh, the brochures and the flyers that we're actually using for sales collateral uh, to where we are going to head out there and hit the road and have all this into place whenever um, we pass the UL standards to get this uh, fully deployed out in the market. Um, obviously, number one, logo rebranding. Uh, number two, we had to update the website more relevant to what our the Gen 3 Halo is. Updated our trade show booth information, uh, sh trade show layout to be more efficient and also to uh, give us a new, clean, fresh, rebranded look. Uh, we've moved away from uh, the DVDs and now are moving to encrypted memory sticks and also, like I talked about, the SharePoint integration that gives the ability to have the online storage uh, to access at any time. So another way to say it is just the Halo Cloud. So that's Halo branded in that sense. So next slide, please. So as we're going through and finding um, what needs to meet uh, UL requirements, we're constantly finding new markets that we're going to be able to put the Halo in. Um, one that we have found is that we always hear about the personal injury, but we focused on mass tort because of the volume. And also, it's at the surgical level. Most of these uh, hip revisions, for example, take place in an OR. But we can't bring our equipment in there unless we're UL certified. And that gives us the ability to uh, go after the mass tort market, uh, where there are a lot of plaintiffs, and the revisions uh, make huge impacts on these settlements. So uh, we've got, like it says here, schedule for the first hip revision. We've got that coming up, and uh, we're anticipating that. Next is the hospital. Where Bill had talked about, uh, Dr. Donovan had talked about bringing in uh, where we had uh, gone to a large hospital and uh, provided a demo and a system for them uh, with the video integrated OR by what we were doing is bringing in multiple medical devices into one feed uh, to have the ability to switch between the views. This is an excellent teaching tool. On top of that, uh, collaboration as well. Uh, and that's where the app with telemedicine comes into play is you're able to blend all of these type of applications and technologies that we're developing that can be modulated to these markets that we're finding, i.e. mass tort, pain management, uh, physicians that want to collaborate, you know, from, from here to, you know, jump in the pond, they can all do it within their iPad uh, using the app and their hardware that goes and installs it and uh, obviously at the hospital level as well. So those are a few market uh, 
few market things that we're dealing with there. So I just want to update you guys, and I do appreciate y'all listening. And I want to go on ahead and pass this off to Dr. Donovan. When we started a conference call, we were talking why we changed our name to Spine Injury Solutions. And as you look in, on this slide, we have to go back and remember medicine is under attack. Reimbursement is down due to the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. Hospitals are looking for quality assurance tools to gain market share, increase reimbursement, and defend against liability claims. The key issue is transparency, and this is a tool that will allow hospitals and doctors to deal with everything on this slide right here. And that's why we're now called Spine Injury Solutions. There's two websites. We have the HALO website. Spine Injury is, is now being a new website developed, being developed with a logo and so on and so forth. So as we make a transition to Spine Injury Solutions, one will be able to understand how we provide solutions for doctors and hospitals. And I, I feel that the telemedicine is going to be something that we're going to be talking more about. So once again, I want to thank everybody uh, for being on this call. And if we have any questions, I hope they've been sent in. And we'll work on uh, trying to answer your questions. But thank you very much for your time. Okay, y'all. Uh, we've got a few we got a few questions here already right now, uh, mainly from one person, so uh, give us some more questions. Uh, Steve Miller has been uh, working overtime. Uh, and the first question he has, in between earnings calls, what can the company do to share information with shareholders, even if it involves general information Recolor, read both the legacy business as well as the Halo application. And I might remind that Steve is actually the moderator uh, and, and the one who founded the Yahoo private chat board for spy pain management. Uh, so, Dr. Donovan, you want to try that one? Sure, Steve, that's a great question. Thank you for asking it. This is why we're redoing the entire website, a, a, a complete redo uh, for spine injury solutions. And I think there's, there's some things in the pipeline now that I think we will be able to convey to our shareholders in press releases, uh, the website. We have some new videos that we're using with marketing to doctors and hospitals. We're going to put these up so that our investors can see the quality of the videos, be it the videos uh, taken from the robotic surgery in a hospital or to procedures done as an outpatient. And the key issue is transparency. And the quality is really good. It's really good. So we now need to make an effort to get this up so that our shareholders can fully understand the two major parts to the company, diagnostic funding, transparency with the HALO video, uh, with the HALO technology. And we're going to make a big effort on that. But uh, it's something I've been upset about. Uh, we need to make it better, and we will. And okay, we have several questions now appearing here. Uh, Steve's follow-up question: First one, what steps, if any, is the company taking to develop and implement an effective investor relations department to both interface with shareholders as well as reach out to the financial community? We need we need to do a better job. We do need to now be reaching out. We have we have some really good products. Uh, we have a patented technology whose real estate is really valuable. And we have been so focused on HALO, 
the certifications that have given us all a bunch of gray hair. And but we're moving through that. There's no big significant issues. And the funding part. We we have to now go after top quality IR information connections to be able to get this out. But before we do that, we have to have a great website. We have to have these videos up there. And uh, we need to work on that, and we're going to. Uh, does the company have an interest in developing a fact sheet about the company, either in physical form or online, that shareholders can use to commu uh, communicate any interest about the company to potential new investors? Yes. We used to have one uh, three or four years ago. Uh, we can have another one. <laughs> we will definitely get an updated fact sheet, and we'll do it both digital and in paper, because uh, with the digital part, we can show the facts, but people need to see these videos. And David will get that up. OK. Uh, Steve, I'm going to come back to the rest of your questions, but let me get a few other people a shot first. Uh, from uh, Lindsay Leeds, if a hospital wants to video every procedure to limit liability, don't they have to get the patient's approval to video surgeries, live births, et cetera? Could that be an obstacle to market acceptance? That's a great question. Lindsay, three years ago when we started video, and I assume patients would complain and refuse to be videoed. It's exactly the opposite. Now, we get both written consents and video consents. Now, will a hospital have to do the same? Absolutely. But let me tell you, things have changed in three years. Everybody thought I was the craziest guy in the world. Now we're having the police have video cameras. Doctors now in surgery want video, the good doctors, want video cameras. And in this uh, particular robotics, especially in ob the doctor who's the head of robotics is going to the hospital with our proposal and saying, look, I want this for my risk and the hospital risk uh, prevention. So there's going to be some hospitals going to say, we don't want any videos. But let me tell you, there's going to be a lot of hospitals going to say, this is hospital XYZ. We videotape our surgeries because we feel our surgeons are top notch and not afraid to video. That's what's going to happen. Hospital is going to use the video part as a marketing tool. Now, will every hospital do it? No, no, nobody ever does anything, you know, altogether. But is there going to be some hospitals that will permit the videotaping? You betcha, because the public is going to demand it, just like the police like the fire people. Everybody wants video. And I think that it uh, it's going to it's going to happen. But is it going to be a hundred percent of uh, hospitals? No. But I think to give you an idea, Cisco says that video represents seventy nine percent of global web traffic by 2018. What happens in just one minute of video? It's 300 hours of video are viewed on Facebook. Why does video work? Well, the brain processes visuals 60,000 times faster than text. The, there's no question video technology is going to continue growing. 
and mobile video traffic will grow 14 times by 2018. And smartphones and tablets already account for over a quarter of all online video viewing. And I think uh, in advertising, rich media ads are significantly more engaging. Rich media ads hit engagement rates of 16.85%. I'm just reading studies here. Compared to 2.14% on standard banners and so forth. So do I think there's going to be certain hospitals who are going to implement video? Yes. 100% no. But they'll do what we do. We do both a written and a video uh, consent. And what, okay. what my patients said, number one, the doctor must be good or he wouldn't be videotaping. Number two, probably more importantly, the doctor would not be doing anything he shouldn't be doing if he's willing to videotape. It's a long answer, but I truly believe in video. Okay, uh, question, another question from Lee Gao. Uh, iData Research produced a report covering Stryker and Black Diamond's efforts to transform the U.S. operating room. Black Diamond's integrated operating room indeed looks impressive. Could Dr. D or Mr. Spencer compare the products and explain why Halo has an advantage with this? I think once you have a complicated integrated OR like Black Diamond's recorded video, Vitals are, are, are fairly easy and straightforward. Uh, great question again. We know Black Diamond. We know Stryker. Great companies. They're talking about hybrid ORs, integrated ORs. Let me tell you a little about Black Diamond. Black Diamond was a software company that did a lot of work for the submarine industry. That's where they were originally done. They had government contracts. And they have now, uh, Black Diamond has been bought, by the way, uh, and it, they have taken their integrated technology, and Black Diamond's very good, Stryker's very good. It's different types of systems. But here, I'm going to put David on just briefly because he was in the operating room and people were talking about Black Diamond, Stryker. Both companies are good, and there's other great companies in the integrated market, and we, we're a little different from them. Here's David. Uh, you mind repeating the question? Okay. Uh, let's see here. It says, uh, iData Research produced a report covering Stryker and Black Diamond's efforts to transform the U.S. operating room. Black Diamond's integrated operating room indeed looks impressive. Could Dr. D or Mr. Spencer compare the products and explain what Halo's advantage is? I think once you have a, a complicated integrated OR like Black Diamond's recording video vitals are fairly easy and straightforward. Oh, thank you for doing that. Yeah, to answer the question is that uh, at the end of the day, all, you know, uh, with what we're doing, with what Stryker, Black Diamond, the competition, what everybody's doing is we're routing video. And how it's all, what, what differentiates us, Stryker, uh, Black Diamond, obviously there are multiple factors, but really when it comes down to just specifically talking about routing video, it's what you're doing with it at the end. And, uh, and also how the end user wants to capture that data. So whether it needs to be integrated into the, the EMR, uh, also does it need to be streamed, does it also, there are companies that all of our competition and us, we have, for us where we have a leg up is that we have the C-arm. We've got the clampable device and that means that we can clamp uh, video devices onto any type of medical uh, device uh, mainly, we are we are focusing with the C arm, the fluoroscopy that's used in personal injury, but also used at the hospital level as well. 
Black Diamond has, uh, as well as Stryker, have the hybrid and the video integrated ORs that bring in multiple medical devices. Um, but there are pros and cons to that, and just like we do as well, um, we're all, at the end of the day, we're all routing video. And some of us are better at some specialties than others, and that's just, you know, the way that it stands right now in the market. Okay. Uh, let me uh, let me just add one thing on our. You know, uh, Black Diamond was bought by Steris, and Steris was the original autoclave people. But Steris is a good company. But here's some idea when you're talking about hospitals and operative rooms. In the United States, there are 5,686 registered hospitals. There are 62,776 fully operational ORs. There are 15,000 integrated and there are like 425 hybrid. Hybrid is the very highest level. A hybrid operating room can cost up to three and a half million dollars for one room. But are there opportunities in hospital operating rooms if we can increase efficiency with transparency? We believe there is. That was a great question, by the way. Next question from Lindsay Lead. Leads, uh, we heard that the QVH is waiting documentation paperwork. Is that still the case? Are there any broad estimates and how much longer certification will take? Before we started certification, I had some gray hair. I have more gray hair. Lindsay, it's incredible. We've gone through testing, 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 testing. We've passed everything. Now we're down to one really minor, unbelievable issue. And it's tr it, it, we're, we're going to get there very quickly, uh, not weeks and weeks. Uh, all the important tests we've passed, and they keep coming back with what we consider very, very minor issues. That would be the area where we're at now. David, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, and David agrees because we we were talking with the uh, our people who are managing the testing. They're pulling their hair out, and uh, but we're going to get there. We'll get there. Uh, this is a really an appropriate question to pop in right now, so I'm going to go back to Steve for a moment here. Although Dr. Donovan has done a terrific job, what is the status of finding a new CEO to manage a direct company with 100% attention and concentration and less gray hair and allow Dr. Donovan to concentrate on his practice as well as be an active consultant and participate in the company's business? <laughs> We've been looking at that issue for the last two years. Right now, what we need is to get the sales going and we we're talking with people from that standpoint uh, at the appropriate point I'll do whatever is best for shareholders and over the last couple years we have interviewed people for the CO job uh, we haven't found the right person. I'll do whatever is best for the shareholder. And we need to finish some certain development, and then we need to really push ahead. What is the current status of legacy shareholders who are holding shares that they wish to liquidate and are subject to selling controls? That's the last question from Steve. No, is anybody out with restricted shares out there? And I guess maybe our one illustrious 19,800 share a month seller. That 19,000 <laughs> shares a month or 20,000 shares, 
I think the last I saw, he had 170,000 left. Down from uh, a million six. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we've to send in re removal 144. Um, we haven't had many requests, um, so it um, we uh, when we look at when we did the shareholder meeting, we looked at the. Uh, the shares, not in street name, but in the, uh, the client's name. There are shares out there from 2000, uh, let's see, 2006, 2007, 2005, where they were issued some shares that we have never, don't even know who they are, never heard from them. So there's a, I think there's a bunch of people with small number of shares. They don't even realize they have shares. But uh, the only one we know is there were two people. Uh, the one that sells 20,000 shares. Then there was a guy earlier this year. He was selling 5,000, but he's gone. Uh, he ran out of shares. And then we had uh, uh, one other person that had 80,000 shares and he's been gone for three months, maybe four months. So you never know when you're going to start getting notifications about 144 release and so forth, but uh, we don't seem to get many of them. Okay, from William Ryan. Uh, would you quick uh, would you quickly review the measures taken to secure the data against hacking or corruption, and to ensure a chain of custody of the events in legal action where the video is used in court cases? Good question. That's uh, Bill I can, Ryan. I can tell you what what we have now. We've had the video what for three years now. So. Some of these cases are now coming through that process. We take the video, uh, put on a DVD. The DVD goes into the medical records. When the records are subpoenaed, they go right into the court system. Now, we've used them in depositions, mediations, and arbitration. None of these videos have gone beyond those three levels. They've never reached a court situation for obvious reasons. But um, it's what's recorded, it's HIPAA compliant, and it's kept in the medical chart. Now, David. When it goes to a cloud, it's all encrypted. Uh, David has all the encryptions. Okay, I, we've got one more question here, so we'll maybe take one or two more if you want to ask it real quick. But the last question I have in the queue is from Ted Bedford. I totally disagree with wasting money on investor relations until the company becomes profitable. I guess that's an opinion rather than a question. So, uh, I will give you all uh, about another minute if somebody wants to add a question. If not, well, wait. Let me let me just say something. You know, I I don't disagree with him. However, we have to balance it. If it's going to be IR stuff, it has to be reasonable. If you notice, we purpose we haven't had an, an IR company uh, since we had that firm in New York two years ago when we were going to a bunch of shows. Uh, it was three and, years ago. <laughs> or three, yeah, you're right, three years ago. <laughs> and we felt that we had to get everything completed, tested, approved, get the right people in the correct slots, get out and expand with doctors and hospitals, and then the time will come when uh, the professional IR and so forth will follow. But 
you notice in three years we haven't been out there spending money on an IR person wherever. Uh, we've had to just focus on our technology products and systems. But it'll get to a point uh, where we will have all that. So for, for Steve, Yes, we want to convey the information properly, accurately, timely. And for those who want to say, well, let's wait, I, I hear you. I hear you very well. And we're going to do whatever we think is best for the shareholders and for the company. But we have to complete what we need before we would start doing some of those other things. Okay, uh, let's try to get a couple. I think we've got two more, and I guess that's going to probably do it. Uh, Ted Bedford jumped in here and said, uh, the company's missed every guideline we've had in the halo so far. Why is there any reason to believe that sales will occur in Q Q4, uh, which is already half over? Uh, and uh, that's his question. I'm sorry, I missed the first part. Uh, could you please uh, no, say it that? says What it says here, it says, Companies missed every timeline we've had for the okay. halo. Why is there any reason to believe it, it might occur in Q4, which is already half over? Uh, we think that this testing is going to be finally completed, and we have some interest uh, now. Uh, this timeline keeps getting pushed back and back, and uh, it, it's unbelievable, this testing pro uh, program. Unbelievable. But... Oh. You have to do it, so you do it. So is there a high barrier to a small company with a unique product? You betcha. If you're a striker, you're a big company, you've got lots of money, uh, the delays of three or four months means nothing. But for a, a small company coming in with a competing product to what we're doing, let me tell you, it takes time and money, lots of time and lots of money. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Uh, Dr. Donovan, do you have any closing comments you'd like to make? Well, I think that you've heard J uh, Dr. Croc speak, you've heard David, you've heard John. What we're developing are solutions for doctors and hospitals. Remember, medicine's under attack, reimbursement's down. Uh, everybody is looking for a method of transparency to increase their revenue patients to attract the best doctors who do the biggest surgeries at the hospitals and so forth. We're trying to resolve some of those problems with the solutions that we're developing. We're getting there. It's a long process. But we need to stick with it, and we will. And we hope that by the next conference call in the new year, we'll have many more things to say. 